Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I'm finally getting around to answering a question that someone asked a while back on how to create a Star Trek transporter effect. Uh, I'm going to show you the end result here. Let's uh, take a quick look. All right, so there's our transporter look. So let's dive in and see how it's done when we come right back. Okay, so this is our final uh, composite here. And unlike most videos where I start at the beginning and work through it, we're gonna start at the end and kind of work backwards because there's a lot of pieces here and I had to put it all together to make it all work and show how it was done. So we'll um, we'll kind of backtrack here a little bit. So first I'm gonna get these pieces out of the way and I'll get the sound effects out of the way. Let's grab all these and we'll move them. And so let's start with the footage. So I have this footage of me walking onto the transporter pad and that just fades out to a blank shot with me not standing on it. So it just fades out. So we'll just watch that. And we have our fade out. And then we do the opposite. On the other side, I have a just a clean plate right there that fades into me standing there. Okay, so pretty simple. We have the fade out and we change locations and we fade in. Now, sure, that could have been enough, but no, we have to go crazy with it. So I'm gonna move the uh, composite back into place here, and I'll go ahead and move that one. These are the same thing, and you can see what this effect is right there. So let's go into the Fusion tab and see how it's done. So here's our final uh, piece here, and what I'll do is I'm gonna start kind of backtracking with some of the pieces. All right, so we're gonna start with an emitter. And the particle emitter is a pretty basic component. It's actually uh, right here on the tab. So if we just click on that, we get a particle emitter and we can look at what this kind of looks like. Oh, well, we have to add a uh, P render to it, P render. And we can see a basic particle emitter starts off as a little cube. So I'm gonna go over to the region tab and I make this a mesh. That allows us to take a shape and put into it. So over here we have the emitter shape, which is a shape 3D. So if I take and go shape 3D and change this to a cylinder, now we can adjust the size of the cylinder to be what we want. And so I can kind of get it in position and connect that to the P emitter. All right, so let's see where we're at now. And so we have our basic particles in this cylinder shape. And then we want to add some noise to it, kind of mix it up a little bit. So I have the fast noise module over here and I'll just create one of those. So we need to add kind of some dispersion around it a little bit. So I'm gonna create an ellipse and I'll put that over here. So we can see it's really coarse. I mean, it's just a fine line there. So we can soften the edge up, we can, um, Bring it down, make that a little smaller there, kind of match uh, you know our, our shape a little bit. And we attach the ellipse to the fast noise. And we can't attach the fast noise to the P emitter yet. We have to go to the P emitter and, oops, well, okay. We got our fast noise over here. We have our P emitter over here. 
we go to the PM emitter and we change from point to bitmap. And now we can connect the bitmap that's created from the fast noise to the P emitter. Okay, so now we've got a little more action going on over here. So we can kind of see how it's going. But we need to, I, I, I did that kind of push up from it. So on the P emitter, I'm going to go and add some velocity to it. And it doesn't need much. So you can see it's kind of going off to the side there and I want it to go up. So let's do negative 90 and we'll see how that runs. And that's the exact opposite from what I want. So I want plus 90. Change that and we give it a little go there. Okay, we're looking pretty good so far, but we want it to uh, have some variation to it. And we can do that with the P flock. And P flock gives some organic constraints to the particles. And this is good for like emulating things like birds or um, groups of things that kind of are going together but have a little uh, discrepancy to them. So after the P emitter, I'm going to add a P flock. Okay, and let's see how this is going. And we can increase the flock number, the follow strength, repel strength, just so they get a, a little more mixed up in there. Okay, that's not looking too shabby there. And then we want to kind of give it some flow. And to do that, I'm going to add a P vortex. Now we can kind of control the... Um, more of the spinning and that kind of aspect to it. So now it's kind of starting to look a little bit more, um, well, it's not, it's not so static. It's, it's starting to mix up a little bit. So let's give it some, a little more strength or a little more power. Now we have a little bit more of an organic flow there and you can try playing with the different accesses here to see what those will do for you. See how that kind of will really mix it up in the middle there, get a little access movement there. So you can play around with things like that, play around with some angles. So you can really kind of mess with this and get the look that you want. So from the P render, we go to a render 3D so that it outputs it. And then just to give it a little final punch, I added a glow, but we're not getting the colors in here right now. Let's look at our P emitter again, and we'll go and double check our settings, see if there's anything we wanna change. We could add some uh, little rotation in here. There, it's starting to mix it up a little bit more. A little maybe Z rotation in there. Keep going until you have what you want. Increase the lifespan so it lasts a little bit longer. That'll give us a little bit more. And really, I'm just kind of, oh, let's change the velocity variance. So they're a little more random in there. So again, this is just all about tweaking it for your specific style and how you want it to look, right? There's no right way, wrong way, anything like that. Let's go to our color controls and we'll just add some color to it. And then, like I said, after the P render, now it's in a 2D world and I can add a glow. So there's our particles going on here. So it's starting to look kind of cool. And I'm gonna put over here. Let's kind of play around with some of these things. So now you can see it's kind of off the screen there. I want to bring it down so it's near the bottom. Let's take our shape. We'll move our shape down and 
decrease our radius so it's a little narrower, change our height. Now let's see what we got. All right, this is getting a lot closer to what I wanted. So kind of near the bottom of the screen. And again, play with it. Just mess up all these settings, do whatever you want with it. And what I'd really like to see is who can do the coolest looking transporter effect. Now, what I've done is I've taken all these files and this project file, and it's on my website at kerrygarrison.com slash transporter. Okay, so the link is in the description. Check it out there. Download this project file. Go through it, just like I've done. Play around with the settings so you kind of understand what the different things do, because this is a very cool example of using the particle emitter and then overlaying it onto video and, and just having some fun with it. I, I think it's a very cool project that I think you'll all enjoy doing and just seeing who can come up with the coolest. Maybe add some lens flares into it or uh, who, who knows. I mean, you're, the, you're only limited by your own imagination and the software can do a tremendous amount of things. So don't be afraid to really get in, dig in and start messing with the different settings. Each of these things, the emitter, the flock, the vortex, the renderer, all these things will affect how those particles move, the sizes, the variances, and you can create a very organic look, a very you know, computerish look, all kinds of cool things with it. And once you really get down and master the particle emitter, you can do all kinds of things from flames to embers to leaves to birds to, I mean, you name it. You can do all kinds of things with the particle system. It is one of the most powerful systems within the fusion engine. So check it out, have some fun with it, experiment, play around. Go to kerrygarrison.com slash transporter. Again, link will be in the description. Download the project file and have some fun. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, I didn't want to go into each one of these things and build it from scratch, otherwise we'd be here for an hour and nobody wants to listen to me for an hour. I don't want to listen to myself for an hour. You probably don't want to listen to me for an hour. So let's just see if this type of project works out. And if you enjoy this, I'll do more like this. So have fun. Let me see what you do. Post your video into the comments below and let's see what you guys can come up with. This has been Kerry. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe. Check that bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.